Hey guys, welcome to the Movement Underground. So the, my name is Mike Stella, this is Anthony Pranzo. Today we're gonna bring you guys the daily cars routine. Um, so this is something that we do with a lot of our clients and if you've been in the Movement Underground for an evaluation, you've probably gone through some of these cars as part of your assessment. So what we're here to do today is kind of walk you through the daily routine, especially now that a lot of us are kind of stuck inside and we're quarantining because of what's going on. This is a great way to just kind of systematically move all the joints in your body so that you're making sure that we're maintaining these full ranges of motion kind of while we're dealing with uh, waiting this thing out. So this is gonna be important for a number of reasons. A, it's gonna move around some joint fluid, so it's really good to keep our joints healthy, just like brushing your teeth is important to keep your teeth healthy. Brushing your joints or moving your joints is really good for joint health. The second thing this does is it really helps us create good context between our brain and our body, right? So having our brain have a really good fine remote control for this awesome meat vehicle that we all came with, okay? So that's why we wanna do the daily routine. It's a daily maintenance ritual. Uh, we recommend to either do it first thing in the morning when you wake up, especially if you're somebody who tends to wake up stiff and in pain, the cars is a great way to get your day started. It's also a great way to just kind of take some movement breaks throughout the day. So if you're a desk worker, Getting up and systematically moving some of these joints around, it can be a great way to mitigate some pain and help improve your health. And the last thing, maybe at nighttime, is a great way to kind of wind the day down if you prefer to do your movement and your mindset uh, practice at night. So this can really be done any day, all day, whenever you want. There is no time limit, so we're just gonna take you guys through the daily cars routine. And we are gonna take you through a full body mobility routine first thing in the morning. So, first thing to do, Mike. Yes. Breath in, pack the air down, take that tension, drive it all the way into the floor. Feet are pushing down to the ground. Feel your legs, your quads, your glutes. Tension in the fists, and we're gonna start at the neck. Chin all the way down to your chest. Go ahead and trace your right collarbone with your chin. Look over your right shoulder. Dip your right ear down, and lead with the chin as you go into extension. Rotate all the way over to your left, moving one mile an hour, looking over the left shoulder, tracing the left collarbone back to the middle for round two. Turn all the way over your right shoulder, dip the ear, leading again with your chin. Perfect, into extension, rotate all the way over to your left, collarbone, chest, and freeze. Before we go into the opposite way, I just want a, a brief description as Mike turns this way. I want you to make sure you're getting rotation and full flexion, or bend that way, and rotation and full extension. Perfect. So now we're going to go the opposite way. Chin down to your chest, rotate to the left, looking over the left shoulder. Good, expanding that range of motion the entire time, leading with the chin, looking over the right shoulder, trace the right collarbone back to the middle all the way through for rep number two, looking over the left shoulder. Once you can't go any further, dip the ear down. Nice, one mile an hour, perfect, and good. Two each way. Quick side note, if you are experiencing any pain with any of those ranges of motion, we're not gonna plow through it, just go through a shorter circle. Perfect. All right, next we're gonna go down to the spine. So for this, cross your arms. Again, pretend like you're in cement from the waist down. So tension in the glutes, feet pushing into the ground, breath in, pack the air down. And now imagine going one vertebrae at a time, bringing your rib cage down to your hips. Once you can't go any further, limited range of motion here, you're gonna take your chest and rotate over the right hip. Once you can't go any further that way, dip your elbow down, and you're gonna start to show your collarbones to the ceiling as you're going into extension of your back. From there, rotate all the way over to your left. Once you can't go any further, back towards the middle and all the way through for rep number two. Keep turning as far as you can, perfect. Dip the elbow, show the collarbone to the ceiling, rotate all the way to the left and extension. Perfect, all the way around for rep number three. Just wanna point out something Mike's doing very well. As he rotates to the right, his left hip is staying straight, locked in cement. Dip the elbow down, collarbone towards the ceiling, and rotate all the way over to the other side. Nice, moving one mile an hour. Back up 
as we go to the other way. If you could turn that way so you can see the limited range of motion his, as we go into flexion, one vertebrae at a time, his hips are not moving backwards. We're going to rotate to the left from here, dip the elbow down, one vertebrae at a time going into extension, perfect, rotate all the way to the right, back down towards that hip, circle it back to the middle, and rotate for rep number two. Hips are staying in cement, not going anywhere, only moving this part of your body. Perfect. All the way around for rep number two. Back to the middle. Rotate, moving just the spine. Hips are staying quiet. Dip the elbow down. Collarbones towards the ceiling. In extension, rotate all the way to the right. Perfect. One mile an hour. Back to the middle. Good. All right. Now we're going to go into scap, scapular cars, cool. or your shoulder blade. So at home, you might want to practice this one at a time, pause the video, but for right now, we're going to do both at the same time. This is the first time you're doing that. So like everything else, tension, feet pushing into the ground, feel your legs, take a breath in, pack the air down, and now we're going to move using the shoulder blades, up as high as you can, so up, shrug it up, round them forward, Push them down, pull them back, up, forward, down, back, elevate, protract, depress, retract, last one, up, forward, down, back, let's face the other way, and reverse directions. So up, back, down, Forward. Notice the hands are staying near the pockets. Up, back, we're only moving the scapulas here. Down, forward, chest and spine are pretty quiet, hips are in cement. Back, down, and forward. Nice job. Next, we're going to go right into shoulder cars. We're going to start with the right side. So, tension in the left hand like you're squeezing something. Keep this tension like 20%. Feet into the ground, pack the air down. Right arm externally rotates pinky towards the middle of your body, start to flex up, moving one mile an hour. Once you feel like you can't go any further, good, rotate that arm, bicep turning this way like you're squeezing out a wet rag the entire time as you're reaching back. Knuckles are going to face your pocket. Perfect. From there, reverse directions. Once you can't go any further that way, unwind the arm and let this movement of unwinding the arm carry you all the way over to your start position. We're going to get three in this arm. Nice job, Mike. Notice how his arm is staying straight the entire time. Pinky towards the midline, up one mile an hour. Rotate this bicep in. Keep turning the entire time. Squeeze out that wet rag, knuckles towards your pocket. Perfect. Reverse directions. Once you hit that roadblock, unwind the arm. Good. All the way through. Check in again, tension in the left hand, bicep up. Notice how his rib cage is not moving at all. We're only moving through the shoulder. Perfect. Knuckle towards your pocket. Reverse directions here. Hit that roadblock and unwind. Excellent. Keep turning, keep turning, keep turning, squeezing out more range of motion the entire time. Nice job. Other side, other arm, I should say. So tension in this hand. Tension in the legs, perfect, rotate, keep turning the entire time, watch out for that stall bar there, we're good, one more step this way, knuckles towards your pocket, good, reverse directions, unwind the arm, there you go, perfect, good, tension in your rib cage, tension in this hand, turn that bicep, like you're squeezing out a wet rag. Perfect. Knuckles towards your pocket. A little bit slower. Unwind. Once you hit your roadblock. Good. All the way up. Back to the start position. So this is another movement where we really don't want to force through any kind of pain. You might feel some clicking and popping and crunching stuff. And, and that relatively is normal as long as it's pain free but we don't want to plow through any pain. So for example, if I'm coming back and I start to get some discomfort, all I'm gonna do is shorten up that circle so that it feels good, okay? So we want feel good pain-free reps here.
Remember, this is a warm up, first thing in the morning, just getting the juices flowing. All right. Cool. From there, we're going to go into elbows. Elbows is a weird one because it seems like a bicep curl. So tension is going to be a choice. And what I mean by that is you could just move your hands through air. It's relatively easy, but I want you to imagine and place the tension on the joint that we're trying to move here, which is the elbow. Imagine like you're moving your hands through jello. All right. So first palms open. From here, we're going to slowly flex those palms up towards your shoulders. Your palms should be facing out at the end from there turn in remember tension is a choice so nice and slow like you're moving through jello only moving uh, through your elbow joint at the bottom there turn over again and flex on up as high as you can once you can't go any further turn over and extend down just want you to freeze there i just want you to notice at home look at the bicep right here as mike goes to supinate He's not moving through the shoulder, only through the elbow, and we're gonna flex on up for the last one. Turn over and extend. Excellent. Now we're gonna hold that pronation, just two more the opposite way. Hold the pronation and from, from flex on up. Can't go any further. Turn over and extend, and then we're gonna get one more. Turn over, flex up. Good. Pop the top there, turn over and extend. Right into wrists. So imagine like you have a cell phone, that brand new iPhone 11 on your forearm here. As we move our wrist, try not to turn that forearm at all. So just like everything else we're doing here, we're isolating joint by joint by joint. So we're gonna do the wrist joint here. It's a small range of motion. So from here, cell phone on the forearm. We're gonna start with pinkies towards the middle of the body. Good, extend or flex up towards the thumbs, extend down, pinkies are staying, our fingers are staying straight the entire time. We're gonna get three in each direction. Like I said, this is a small range of motion. This Your is one focus, that I particularly struggle with, yeah. Right, no, no wonder. Limited range of motion at the wrists. Right. And reverse directions, extend down towards the thumbs, flex on up, good. One mile an hour, good, towards the pinkies, extend down, towards the thumbs, and good. Nice job. From here, we're gonna go right into hips. So at home, grab a wall, or a broomstick, or anything you have at home. We're gonna use a stall bar. From here, Mike is going to place tension in his outside leg. His outside hand is gonna create fist. So now we have that inside leg to do our first hip curl. We're gonna bend the knee. Go ahead and flex the knee up from here. Perfect. Once you can clear that heel through, you're gonna go into this hacky sack motion. From here, open up that leg like a barn door. This hip isn't going anywhere. Once you can't go any further, small range of motion, lift the heel as you reach back with that heel. Perfect. Your knees are gonna to come together. That's the halfway point. Now from here, reach back with the heel once again. Knee is going to come back up, rotate through, keep rotating the entire time, similar to what your shoulder car looked like. We're going to do three on this side, three on the other side. So flex on up. The same concept applies for hip cars since, as, we, as Mike stated about the shoulder car, if you feel like you're going into a range of motion that you may feel like a pinch or pain, just go around it for now. Perfect. But if there's no pain there, with each rep, you're trying to expand that range of motion. Open up like a barn door, lift the heel, reach back, knees come to meet each other. Good, reverse directions, tension in this hand here. Rotate that heel all the way through. Nice job. Three to that side, move on. Another note here, one of the common faults is gonna to be to move your back and your spine a lot. So really do focus on keeping a little bit of rigidity or a little bit of stiffness in your core and try to limit the amount that your pelvis goes into these dips, okay? Here we go. Tension there, outside leg creates tension. Tension in the left hand. Go ahead, bend that right knee. Flex on up, rotate the heel through, open up like a barn door, quiet rib cage, quiet low back, lift the heel as you reach back, perfect. Knees come to meet each other. <clears throat> From here, reverse directions, knee up, rotate the heel through, keep turning, excellent, back down. One mile an hour, 
constantly trying to expand the range of motion, flex on up, rotate through, open up like a barn door, movement only coming from this hip, nothing else is helping. Good, reverse directions. Reach with the heel, knee comes up, rotate the heel all the way through, and we got one more rep. Back down, knee stays bent the entire time. Important note, knee stays bent the entire time. Open up like a barn door, lift the heel into internal rotation, reach back with that heel. Perfect, knees come to meet each other. Reverse directions, good, knee up. Swivel that heel into external rotation all the way as much as you can and back down. Perfect. From here, we're gonna go down to knee okay. or tibial cars. So we're gonna take a knee from here. I'm gonna take a knee. Mike is gonna sit down on his bum. We're gonna start with the right leg. From here, right leg, take your right hand, scoop underneath, grab your left bicep. Left hand comes on top of the knee, and now we've got a nice mechanism for holding our leg together. The goal is to move through here and not the ankle. So we're going to lift the heel as a point of contact. We're going to lift your foot up, so toes up off the ground. Heel becomes a swivel point, and we're moving through here. Let's go out, lift up. Do not extend all the way because you can't rotate in full locked out leg. In and down. Rotate out as much as you can. Up in, down, nice, one more, out as much as you can, perfect, up, in, down, excellent, from here rotate in as much as you can, I understand this is a very challenging motion, but try it, in, up, out, and the entire time as you're going out, imagine like you're pushing it to someone's hand as you go down, good, rotate in, Rotate in the entire time. Imagine like you're pushing it to someone's hand on the way up. Externally rotate and down. One more. In, up, out, down. Switch legs. So left arm scoops underneath, grabs right forearm or bicep. Heel is the point of contact. Lift your toes up and we're going to go ahead from here. Externally rotate, lift up. Internally rotate the entire time. Imagine trying to push into someone's hand as you flex. Out, up, in, and down. This is like flossing those back molars, you know. We're really trying to get as much rotation out of this knee as we can. The intent is, is all that matters. And down, reverse directions. It's in as much as you can. Up, out down good you guys might notice that i'm struggling a little bit more with this side and so as you're going through your routine if you start to see asymmetries or you, you struggle more on one side than the other just take a note of that a that's something to let us know when you come in or reach out to us and let us know but b it's also just a point of reference where as you're improving over time uh you can use that as a data point so again this is a knee that i've had surgically reconstructed so I will struggle a little bit more here, but that's even more important why I need to do this on a day-to-day, -day, is sure. to make sure that I'm maintaining that function. Nice. All right, back to the right side for the right ankle. Once again, scoop the right arm underneath, grab the left bicep, lift your leg up, and now we're only trying to move through the ankle. So knee doesn't move at all. This hand, this opposite hand, is going to grab that knee just to monitor that we're not moving through that knee right. at all. And now through the ankle, toes up, in as much as you can, down and out. Really important to maintain one mile an hour. It's going to be very common that you'll see points at which your ankle wants to just speed through and that's your nervous system saying, hey, what are we doing? We've never been in this range of motion, but spend your time one mile an hour, each rep trying to expand the circle. So we're going to do three one way and three the other. I like to say with the three reps, the first one is kind of just drawing a circle, the second one is tracing that or getting a little bit bigger, and the third one is making the biggest circle that you possibly can without compensating through your knee. Perfect. You know, for those of you who have had ankle sprains, you might notice that certain ranges are a little bit more challenging and that is okay. Just really try to focus on slowing down through that part, uh, portion of the movement. 
Switch sides here. So left arm under left leg, grab right bicep, right hand is gonna monitor the knee. Toes up, out, down, and in. Up, out, down, in. Nice and slow, out, down, in. Reverse directions. In, down, out, up. One mile an hour. In, out, up. Last one. In, down, out, and up. Nice job. Thank you. From there, we'll go right into toes. So we're going to stand yeah. up for toes. This is the one that most people struggle the most with. Right. Without even knowing it. So three points of contact. Imagine like the three points of contact being heel around your pinky toe and your big toe. So from there, maintaining three points of contact, I want you to go ahead and lift your big toes up and back down. Good, big toes up, back down, big toes up, back down. Now outer four toes lift up, big toe stays down. Good, same thing, outer four lift up, back down, outer four lift up, and back down. Now lift all toes up, tap the big toe, and back up. Nice, tap the big toe, back up, tap the big toe, back up, and tap the outer four toes now, back up. Tap the outer four toes, back up. Freeze at home, take a look at what your hands are doing. I'm sure we're gonna see a lot of finger guns going on. <laughs> All right, back up, outer four, tap and back up. All right, that concludes this morning routine. Hope you guys liked it and this is something you could do every day. If you have any questions, comments or concerns, leave them down in the box below. Shoot us an email or a text message if you have anything else that you need to ask. But this is something that you could do every day in the morning and we hope it helps you feel better, move better and move a little bit more. This is Mike and Anthony from the Movement Underground saying see you next time.